The late comedian Red Fox used to quip, someday health nuts are gonna feel pretty stupid lying in hospitals dying of nothing. I get the humor, but my money is on the health nuts. We do live in interesting times as far as nutrition is concerned though. Many foods today have been processed and engineered to be fat free, sugar free, cholesterol free, and salt free, but the unintended consequences are they are also mostly vitamin free, mineral free, and enzyme free, therefore basically nutrition free. Enzymes are very specific kinds of amino acids or proteins that act as catalysts that are involved in virtually all physiologic processes in the body. The vast majority have scientific names that end in the suffix ACE or A-S-E. There are about 2,500 to 3,000 known enzymes, but Dr. McCullough feels that there may be another 50,000 that are not yet discovered. Many enzymes are involved in the digestive process. They break down foods into smaller molecules that are more easily digested and absorbed. Generally, proteases help digest proteins, largely in the stomach. Lipases in the intestine help to digest fats, while sucrases are for sugars, amylases for processing carbohydrates that starts with the saliva in the mouth, and cellulase helps break down fiber. There are classes of enzymes that are, offer antioxidant and anti-inflammatory protection. Still others support our immune system. The lion's share of enzymes are produced in the pancreas and are involved with a wide diversity of activities in the body, such as energy production, hormone regulation, transporting nutrients into and waste products out of the cells, fighting infection, and increasing the efficiency in oxygen utilization. There are endogenous enzymes which are produced in the body and exogenous which must be supplied in the diet. A number of processes impact the production and action of the essential enzymes. It's a regrettable reality that the body's natural enzyme production begins declining after your early 20s. By the time a person reaches their 70s, they may be only producing a third of the enzymes that they need. That fact, coupled with the decreased production of hydrochloric acid in the stomach, makes digestion more challenging in the advancing years. Our internal pH and temperature can have a positive or a negative impact on, on our enzyme function. Heating above 116 degrees denatures and inactivates the enzymes that would normally be plentiful in most foods. The majority of processing techniques also destroys natural enzymes and is a sad fact that over 90% of the foods that Americans buy are processed. The longer food is stored, the more the enzymes are denatured. It has also been confirmed that certain pharmaceutical drugs deplete our enzymes. Common signs of digestive enzyme deficiency are, of course, poor digestion, poor absorption of nutrients, heartburn, bloating, cramping, gaseousness, and constipation. In other words, misery. Raw foods, especially those that are sprouted, are enzyme rich and take a tremendous burden off the body's need to produce its own enzymes. I recently read that ideally, it's recommended that we get 75% of our digestive enzymes from our food. Avocados, pineapples, grape, papaya, kiwi fruit, coconut and olive oil are all delicious enzyme powerhouses. Consuming fewer calories as well as chewing your food more thoroughly can boost your enzyme levels. Oral administration of enzymes is beneficial in conditions like lactose intolerance, pancreatic insufficiency, and indigestion. Now by design, I've way oversimplified the body's enzyme activity. In reality, it's much more complex and there are many more things involved such as cofactors, coenzymes, substrates, thermodynamics, and modulation. But all you really need to know for your health is eat it fresh and eat it raw.